here when it's so stinking hot you're about to die. Exactly. This is lovely. Governor, as uh, you know, in broadcasting and in politics, a lot of our national conversation is based on current events. Uh, yes. Horrible tragedy out in Virginia this morning. It's uh, becoming all too common in this country. What can be done about it? It, it appears once again we have uh, an issue where uh, violence has erupted out of the heart of somebody filled with hate, filled with bitterness and anger. And uh, ultimately, what we have, as I've often said, it's a sin problem. It's where people elevate their own interest above the others. You can only murder somebody if you can devalue them and make them less valuable than yourself. You can't murder somebody if you value their lives, if you believe that God loves them and God loves you and God holds you both accountable. You can only murder somebody when you come to the conclusion that that other life is worthless. And so until we address the root cause, which is a spiritual issue, uh, sadly, unfortunately, this will continue to be with us because it's been with us since uh, Cain and Abel. How do you uh, get people to change that because more and more people maybe aren't as religious as they used to be? And it's not just being religious, it's, it's exercising really the common sense of understanding that what gives me the right to think I'm better than somebody? What gives me the right to think that somebody else is less than me? The equality of all of us is so foundational, not just to our religious beliefs, uh, but to the very essence of what it means to be American, that we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all of us are created equal, endowed by our Creator with certain unalienable rights among these life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. It all comes down to the foundation of believing that all of us are really equal. You talked about the importance of Iowa retail politics hitting all 99 counties, something you were obviously good at in your past run. With the change in campaign finance, have you found that there's a difference this time around? I guess we'll find out in February. Um, I mean, I think it makes the money a big factor. But quite frankly, as I saw eight years ago, I mean, we were literally outspent 10 to 1. Romney had $10 to our 1. And it did not move the needle in his direction. We won not barely, but substantially by nine points. And I think it was because there comes a point at which Iowa voters are sophisticated and they're very savvy. They're not easily fooled or impressed that somebody has a real nice, clever TV commercial. Because they want to meet you. They're going to ask you hard questions. They're going to look into your eyes and they'll know whether you're real or not. And a TV or radio spot attacking on a, another candidate, that doesn't prove anything. It proves you've got a lot of money to burn and uh, scorch the people around you. But one of the things I've respected and appreciated and, and frankly admired about this process and it's starting in Iowa is that people here um, they don't respond that well to the scorch the earth negative campaigns against other candidates. Uh, they find that off-putting. And I think that's one of the reasons that I'm glad that Iowa continues to be the first in the nation uh, caucus. How will your fair tax plan uh, help protect Social Security and Medicare? Well, right now funding for both Social Security and Medicare only comes from payroll taxes, which is diminishing because fewer and fewer people uh, are on a payroll somewhere. So they're contractors, you know, they're not paying in, the employers aren't paying in, uh, they're making their money through dividends and, and through uh, investments. Most of the wealth in America is, is not payroll wealth, it's investment wealth, passive income. So you have a diminishing uh, funding stream to pay for Social Security and Medicare, but you have a greater number of people needing to take money out of that system. Under the fair tax, it all goes into the general fund, so you have a, a more diverse and broad-based uh, funding stream for it. What, 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 thinks, what do you think sets you apart from the other 16 Republicans running for president? There, there are a lot of qualities that many of us share. I, I think that, for me, the separating point is those of us who have governed and those who haven't, because I do think that that's important. I, I personally think uh, you don't put somebody in the left seat of the airplane who's never flown that plane when you're about to go through a big storm. You want someone who has uh, got thousands of hours, been through the storms, and is prepared to do that. Um, from there, I think you look at governors, you ask what kind of political environment did they operate in? Did they, did they have to really fight their way through, and, and were they successful in bringing people together? Because I don't think most of us would argue that the next president needs to bring this country together, be able to get people 
uh, diverse views to come together to solve the challenges that we face. And uh, I think I match up better than anybody on the stage. And the ability to articulate, communicate the message, that's, that's important as well. Thanks. And when you uh, talk about uh, articulating that message, uh, many people say a lot of people are self-absorbed, they're into their phones, they're into their uh, electronic devices, and their attention spans aren't that deep right now. Uh, how do you counter that in today's political uh, climate? Well, I think uh, we use those devices that they're on. You know, social media is a very important part of our campaign. Twitter, Facebook, um, Vine. We, we try to use a lot of different resources to get to voters that maybe aren't watching television at night or, you know, reading uh, traditional print publications. Maybe they're getting their information off social media. And for those, we want to make sure that we're getting to where they are. I mean, I learned from being uh, a longtime uh, fisher and hunter, hunter that if you're going to bring a deer uh, back home or if you're going to you know, pull a bass out of the water, you better go where the fish and the animals are because they're not going to show up at your house and knock on your door and ask to come to your freezer. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Nice to see you. Governor, Thank real, you. real quick, just what do you, what do you think of Wasini in Iowa? It is a beautiful community, and I was especially taken by uh, the town square. A lot of vibrant and very alive businesses surround uh, the town square, and it's refreshing to see any downtown area where people take great pride in their stores, their offices. Uh, they look nice and clean and well-kept, and uh, it's a delightful kind of community.